Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're gonna to do something really cool. I'm gonna show you how to do count if in Power BI and I'm gonna show it to you in a better way than you've probably been shown before. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with our data here. So let me show you this data. This is our data and it's basically hardware store sales for multiple stores at a chain of these hardware stores um, in 2019. So what they did was they did a coupon mailer, right? And they did, uh, they used coupon codes and group. So what that means, there were six coupon codes, one through six, and then see like there's six and one here. And then they did it by group. They had these group to uh, best customers, middle of the road customers, and their lower uh, basket or uh, new customers. So they had it by those three groups. And usually they're referred to in the industry as primary, secondary, and tertiary groups. Sometimes they'll have a fourth one called un, uh, unclassifieds. But in this case, there's uh, six coupons and three groups. And what we want to do is I want to show you how to use count if in Power BI. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new column and I want to look at repeated users, right? So what I want to see is I want to end up with this right here, right? I want to know how many participants in these coupons used it more than once, right? So the reason being is this company wants to look at potential fraud. Sometimes they have some people that will buy a bunch of, you know, they'll use a coupon multiple times. And in this case, these coupon mailers are supposed to only be used once. So if they use coupon two, they can't use one, three, four, five, or six in this case. And then on top of that, because they're grouped by primary, secondary, and tertiary, or in this case, uh, groups one, two, and three, what that means is group one can only purchase uh, use coupon one or two. Group two can only use coupons three or four, and group uh, three can only use coupons five or six. So they want to make sure that they just use one coupon per person and uh, per group. So what we're going to do here is you can't, this is, so we're going to have to use DAX. Obviously, DAX is the uh, code set for Power BI. And what we're going to do is you have seen the data. We have this. We have customer ID, household ID, which I'm not using here, coupon, coupon code, and group, right? But you don't have repeat user. So I'm going to show you how to build repeat user so that it counts these. And what I want to do is I want to see for each customer ID how many times they buy. It. So I remember this data was out of order and doesn't show, um, you know, I don't know how many times each one of these bought. So I need to be able to fill this thing in correctly. So what we'll do is go to data, right? So you got, this is your report view, this is your data view, and this is your model view. We don't need to go into model right now. Let's go into data, to this right here, it's your data view. And then see at the top of these, so right now, if you didn't have this in here, which you wouldn't with this data set, you have to build that, you would have to go up here um, to your table tools, right? And then you would go to new column. We're not doing a new measure, we're doing a new column. So this is a new column. You click on this and then it'll give you the typical uh, code set here or the area to enter in your code. And um, this is your column calculated field. So what we're gonna do here is I've called it repeat user. So when this, when you first hit new column, it's gonna tell you column equals. So reword this. In this case, I reword it to repeat user so it means something. Um, so I know what it is. And then you've got calculate right here. We're gonna use the calculate function. Then we're gonna do is use count A, which is count all, right, a of that occurrence. And then what I'm doing, so it's not, it's count if, but it's not count if in the code. It's a count A. And so what you'll see here is on this, we have our data is called coupon mailer, right? That's the name. So we use coupon mailer, see it right here, just like that. Then we have to use the actual column idea that we're going to use to determine that these are you know, repeated or non-repeated purchases. Well, obviously we'd have to use customer ID or household ID. In this case, we're gonna use customer ID, okay? And the reason for that is a household can have numerous customer IDs, right? So one household could have potentially four or five people with different card IDs. So we want to see the people. You could do household, but you're going to have potential that they did qualify to each have coupons, right? But we don't want, to, this is to address the potential of fraud at the card level. So we're going to use the card, which is customer ID. Then right after that, make sure you use the brackets correctly, right? So these brackets have to be those. Um, with the parenthesis right there, then the comma, and then we use a filter, right? So this is where the count if happens. So we're gonna filter it. We're gonna filter all of coupon mailer, right? By 
right here, or where coupon mailer customer ID, right, equals earlier coupon mailer customer ID. See that? So what that means is when I look at the customer ID, and I have to put them, see right here, I'm putting them in order first. So once I get done with this, I'll put them in order right here. See this? So you would click on this to have them in ascending order. And then once you do that, what it's going to do, it's going to look at, so if I'm looking at this one, it's going to look at this one. It's going to say, does this one equal this one? If this one does equal this one, then they're the same, right? That same customer used it twice. And then what it's going to say here is comma one. Use it for one uh, as the value, right? So in this case, it gives one. But if it's somebody, let's find somebody down here that used it more than once to show you an instance of it. Let's see here. Oh, there's one. I just saw it too. There it is. Oops, right there. Okay, see this? So in this case, this person used it once, twice, three times, right? They used three coupons, the same coupon, three times. They're not supposed to be able to do that. So that's why I'm going to alert that. Now, look at how this happens. So when you use uh, count A here, what it does is it gives you the value of it for the for two fields. See that? So it brings down two each time. We don't want to have that. You want to have it halved because there's three. So you don't want to have six, right? So you want to have three. You want to identify each of the instances, how many times they're repeated, right? So in this case, I want to have one, two, three. But if I do this, it's going to give me two, two, two because it totals the field plus the other one. So I don't want to do that. So what I've added at the end here is divided by two. See that? So after all of the closed end parentheses, I put a divide by two because if I don't, it'll inflate my value by double and I don't want to do that. So this is your total code to do that. Okay. And once you've done this, it will fill in the repeat user just like I have here. Okay. And so now when I go back here, now that I've done that, I can go and bring it in and see the repeat users, right? But what I want to see, this one is not filtered, right? You see here, there's nothing filtered on it. If I go to this one, which is customer ID, coupon, and repeat user, this is filtered to where it's greater than one, right? Because I don't want to look at the ones where it's one, right? If it's one, it's not a repeat user. If it's more than one, it's a repeat user. So I want greater than one. So if you look at this, see this? You got twos, fives, twos, fives. You don't have anything less than that. And it'll tell me how many times these people repeat purchased, okay? By coupon, right? So next, what I want to see is I want to see the, if I want to see the participation by coupon, I click here and that gives me coupon code by customer ID, right? And this one is not filtered. See, there's no filters here on the visual or on the page for this guy. So this just shows me participation by coupon of all the customer IDs, right? So I can see that coupon two, coupon four, and coupon six had the highest percentage participation rates, and coupons one, three, and five did not. Now notice I'm using coupon code here. If I didn't use that and I used coupon, the problem is coupon is a text field. It's coupon space five, coupon space four. And what that would do is it would come in here and it would order it in, it would not be in the correct order. It might be like three, four, five, one, two, three, or something like that. So you have to use numbers. You have to use a numeric field to get this to show correctly of one, two, three, four, five, six for your coupon codes, in this case with this data. And then you have the customer ID over here, which is not the, it's the count. See this right here, count. Okay, see how we did that? And then this one right here, remember this one was not filtered. This one is filtered, see that? where repeat user again, just like here, is greater than one. We wanna identify those that did what? They bought it more than one time, right? So if we look at this, and we look at these two boxes over here, right? So these are cards, and if you have any question on where these are, so your cards are right here. See how they have that little box around because I clipped on it? Same thing with here. Okay, this one is just total unique customer IDs, right? So I brought customer ID in there, and then we just select count distinct because I want to know how many distinct people really participated, right? I don't want to have just all participations. I mean, I could, I could have another field there for all the redemptions under it. Um, but the main thing here I want to see is the multi-redeemers. How many people multi-redeem? So if I click here, 
right? That was the ask here to identify potential possible fraud. So we go here and we click on this, look at this, multi-redeemers, right? And we have count of repeat users greater than one where it's filtered to this. So I wanna see all of them that multi-redeemed. And then the same thing goes here. So if I take 10, nine, and six, see that 10, nine, and six, that gives me 25, which is this. So if I wanna show you this, all this is, is a bar graph, okay, right here, see the box that's uh, got a square on it. And if you look at this, we did a couple little fine things on here, like we went and, um, let's see which one, I wanna look at the total labels. So the total labels are these guys at the top right here, which is kind of nice to see instead of having the number in the middle. And it gives it a nice little shading on it. I believe we used 90%, uh, 87%, okay, close enough, shading. And uh, so it looks pretty nice to do that. That's the total labels piece for a bar graph. Um, we also, if you look at the beginning part of it where you have the fields brought in, I did coupon for the axis, right? Right here. And I did legend of coupon, which is I wanna identify which coupons they use, one, two, three, four, five, or six. And if you look, the repeat users were only in one, two, and three. There were no repeat users in four, five, and six. Could be because they had lower amounts of usage. Maybe they implemented something to catch them. Maybe it was a uh, uh, person, a cashier that was letting people, didn't understand the process and unintentionally let some people repeat, redeem. Or, you know, like, so they came in, they couldn't use it. They said, I can't use this. And they, they hand keyed it in or something. That could have happened. Um, and maybe it got corrected here by the store. I don't know. All I know is we have multiple redemptions for the first three coupons. See that? three, two, and one, and the most were in coupon three, followed by coupon two, followed by coupon one. So you see how that works? And we've got count of repeat user is the value, right? So that's basically, in a nutshell, what we did. The most important thing out of all these is not the, while well, the visuals are very important, don't get me wrong, they show the story, but I couldn't have done anything here to identify these two if I didn't have this repeat user column, which we created here, by using this. All we did was we went to table tools. We already have the customer ID here. And what I wanted to see, it's not by date. I was just looking at if I put them in this order, right? Of ascending order. And if I go, so you would click here and you can sort by ascending or sort descending. See that? So I've done that. Let's see, cancel, there we go. And once you've done that, then you just put in this, uh, formula right here, which is calculate count a coupon mailer. In this case, that's the data, right? Customer ID is the, is the name of the uh, field, right? The column customer ID. Then we bring in filter all because we want to filter all of them, right? We don't want to have some that gets skipped because I mean, you could do that if you wanted to, if you wanted to only have coupon one and two, we could filter it down to coupon one and two. In this case, I want filter all of coupon mailer where, that's what we're doing right here, coupon mailer of customer ID equals earlier coupon mailer of customer ID, comma one, and then in the end, we'll divide it by two, because if we don't do that, we'll double our results, which would make it erroneous, okay? So that's how that works, and you just saw how to do count if in Power BI in a very easy to use format. You just need something that's an identifiable column like customer ID, household ID, coupon ID, if you had coupon ID, UPC numbers, uh, anything that's got a lot of numbers that's uh, unique to a instance, an item, a person, a place. Um, and that's how you do that. And then you end up you know, with something you can easily turn into this, which is a great uh, visualization that shows exactly you know, to your executives. So this is actually a real uh, business use case where you would be identifying potential abuse for, you know, so we've got people that used it multiple times, and these people that used it five times right here for coupon one, that would definitely be someone you need to look at when it's supposed to only be used once. What happened there? So I hope you found this interesting and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share because I got a lot of great stuff like this coming out. We're gonna show you all kinds of cool things, whether it be in Power BI, R, R Studio, Python, you name it, we're gonna do it here. This is what we do in data science and analytics to bring uh, data together and to show stories on that data in a uh, intelligent, informational, and insightful manner. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.